I want to entitle this Prayer Mixed with Incense, and I may be titling this Prayer Mixed with Incense Part 1 because I could possibly go over so I would stop and maybe come back some other time, maybe next week. Um, but I have a secondary title that goes with that that will help us to understand incense because prayer mixed with incense is, is a big deal to God. And that secondary title is With Us in Trials, Not Delivering Us From It. With Us, Not Delivering Us From It. And so to begin, I'd like to start in very familiar um, scriptures to some of you. And that is uh, Psalm 141. Psalm 141 and verses 1 and 2. And in that, um, I want to highlight the relationship of prayer with incense. Psalm 141, verses 1 and 2. Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up my hands as the evening sacrifice and so here we have our first example uh, of particularly in relationship to using the word incense and that being related to prayer and I'm, I fear that many people really don't they just pray um, but uh, I was blessed last night to be a part of a time of prayer that all the people that prayed it truly had that spirit of incense. Um, so let's go to Revelation chapter 8. And again, some of you may be familiar with these verses. Revelation 8, and we're going to look at verse 3 through 4. And um, I will read it for you. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints. That he should offer it with the prayers. The, the prayers are not incense. The prayers are being offered with incense. With the prayers um, of all saints upon the golden altar. And the golden altar is not the brazen altar where the sacrifices were killed but the golden altar that stood before the Holy of Holies that was uh, where all the incense was offered up to God. It was still an altar. It was an altar every bit of, as much as, as the uh, brazen altar. Um, and so it says, of all the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne because the uh, Holy of Holies is where the mercy seat was and became the throne of God. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And so <clears throat> you see an ascending taking place here. And, uh, and notice that it says the incense ascended uh, and it came with the prayers. It wasn't just prayers. All right, and so now a real familiar set of scriptures, but I found these interesting. Uh, Psalm 23, and uh, I want to divide Psalm 23 into uh, three, uh, four sections, I guess, but three basic sections. So we will um, we'll look at verse 1 through 3, and this is David talking about God as if, he is over there somewhere, but he's not talking to God. He's talking about God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. So notice it's as if he's talking to you or to me about God, but not talking to God. But I want you to notice that in verse 4, and maybe you never really noticed this before, but from verse 4 and 5, he begins to talk to God. So what is talking to God? 
what is it? It's, it's praying, okay? So then, uh, beginning with the verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Now he's talking to the Lord, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Uh, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. And so you have, you have this now coming as a prayer, coming forth in this spirit. And notice that he talks about uh, going through the valley of the shadow of death, going through that valley, not just, just, not just that uh, one thing, but a valley of it. And uh, he doesn't pray that it be removed. Yea, though I walk. And he talks about him being with him. You are with me. And uh, then uh, he says, uh, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You see, he's talking to God, and he's, as it were, in prayer, but he's not asking for anything. He is declaring, If I go through this, I will, you, you will be with me, not deliver me from it. And then... You, then he says, talking about his enemies, he doesn't say remove my enemies, but he says, you will prepare a table for me. I will feast on certain things uh, in relationship to uh, this situation that I'm in. Um, and thou prepares a table for me in the presence, in the presence of mine enemies. Let's face it, many times we want, we don't want to go through a valley of shadow of the death. We don't, we don't want to be in the presence of our enemies. But this is the beginning scriptures that begin to show us what incense might really refer to, what it's pertaining to, and that this prayer has incense in it. We're going to see this a lot more, okay? So, um, I want to talk about the three Hebrew children, uh, and this is in Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, and uh, it's uh, good old Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And uh, <clears throat> I want you to, to notice again uh, their stance in relationship to um, the situations that they're going to go through and that they're not looking to be delivered from, but to that God would be with them in that, okay? So we're beginning with verse 11. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, so this is, a, this is, this is the king uh, wanting people to fall down and worship him, which is, you know, this is a form of prayer and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Bab Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury, fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do, uh, do not uh, ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Verse 15, Now, if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, well, but if you worship not, you should be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Okay. So, these men already have incense. They already have incense. <laughs> they're going to they're turn a fiery furnace into an altar of incense before the Lord. Okay. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. Okay? He, if it be so, 
He's able to deliver us. Remember, we're talking about not being delivered, but God being with you in it. He says, and, um, and from thine hand also. Uh, but verse uh, 18, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Okay. So they have come to this horrible situation, and yet instead of freaking out or sending up prayers of, Oh God, deliver us from the horror of this, deliver us from the unjustness of this, deliver us from the power of this, incense is rising to the Lord. Even if he doesn't deliver them, he says, you know. So then, um, verse 19, Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace uh, seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men, the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats and their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Verse 22, therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot the flames of the fire slew those men that took up shadrach meshach and abednego okay so these are the mightiest men the strongest men that the king has that's what he asked for that's what he got they died in the fiery furnace just casting these three in all right verse 23 and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the fi burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. They're not bound. They're not in bondage. They're not bound up with the circumstances. They're walking around in the fire. I see another one in there that I thought we only cast three. And they're in there walking. They're in there walking. That's important. Uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Walking. It's, it's in our walk. It's supposed to be in our walk in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth man is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. So the scripture says that there wasn't even the smell of smoke upon them. And yet what I believe is there was the smell of incense that went up with them because they were, they were there in that same spirit. I'm not asking you to deliver us. We're with you. And, and, and you said you'd be with me in the fire. And there was the Lord, one like the Son of God, in the midst of that with them. And so they... And, and they didn't fear. David didn't fear. David didn't fear because... He was with me, you know. So if the Lord is with you, why are we praying all the time to get rid of the circumstance but not have the Lord with us? It's like the Lord is far away and we're praying, get rid of the circumstance, but these men are saying, the Lord is with us and we're in it. I'd rather have the Lord with me through anything than me just praying for Him to remove it, praying to a God far away, just clear my path and make everything perfect. Okay, so now I want to go to the New Testament, and let's look in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to look at verse 6 through 10. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 6 through 10. All right, verse 6. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. 
For now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. So did you hear what happened? Okay, the messenger of Satan's coming, and he's attacking Paul, and he's bringing about infirmity. And Paul did what we usually do. Three times he went to the Lord in prayer. I besought the Lord thrice. This is, this is prayer without incense. Remove this from me. Get me out of the fiery furnace. Don't let me go into the fiery furnace. Don't let me go into the valley of the shadow of death. See? And so, and he says that he might remove it, that it might depart from me, that it might depart from me. Okay? <clears throat> Verse 9, And he said unto me, my, this is God's talking, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect, perfect, perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities, not away from them, but in them in the fiery furnace, in the valley of the shadow of death. In, okay, so I will glory, rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me, that the power, God is with me. I will be with you in that. The power of Christ may rest on me, that I have something separate from me and my ability to handle this stuff. Um, uh, so he says in verse 10, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in the midst of reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. It's all, he's still in it. But the power of Christ is resting upon him. Even in his weakness, he's feeling another kind of strength. It's called, someone else is here with me. His name's Jesus. And so then it so it ends that with for, uh, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Okay, so I know we're getting yeah we got three minutes. Maybe I can get mm, yeah maybe I can get one more in here. <laughs> Lord willing here. Um, Let's look in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. I've actually skipped just a little bit here so that I could give you something short. So I can. So this is going to be part one. <laughs> and we will definitely have a part two because I want to finish this. And it might even go into a part three. Okay, so let's look at 1 Corinthians. Uh, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and let's look in verse 13. I love this scripture. I love all the scriptures. They testify of Jesus. Okay, so um, I wrote a little statement here. I, wrote, I just wrote this. Can you make it? Can you make your situation freedom in exile? Freedom in exile. Can you make it that? All right, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Boy, most people know this scripture. Uh, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. All right, we, we all know this scripture, and we go, okay, well, if it gets too hard for me, God's going to take it away and He's going to give me a way of escape so I don't have to bear it. Zoom in on this. This is the last part of that verse that people leave out. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. He's making it so you'll be able to bear it. He's not just removing it. The way of escape isn't to get rid of the, the uh, uh, temptation and the thing that's too hard to bear. It's to, to have the Lord be able to move in us, deal with us to such a degree that with Him, by His life, by His nature, 
We can bear a cross. We can bear, we can bear a lion's den. We can bear a fiery furnace. We can bear it. We can bear all that. We can. Every one of us can, for thou art with me. If thou art with me, if you're with me in the furnace, if it's your life, if it's your nature, then we can, we can bear that. Um, so he's not trying to give us an escape from it. He's trying, and let me just read it again, then I'll close with that. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted, tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Your escape is the ability to bear it. <laughs> You don't hear people emphasizing that that much. All right, so I, I'm going to close here, and we will see if I'm not even sure where I'm going to be next Wednesday. Maybe I'll be here in Texas. But love you folks. Love you so much. I love, love your hearts. I love your hunger. I love that you want the Lord. I love that you, you cry out. I love that you search the scriptures. I love that you pray. I love that you pray together. I love that you come together. You come together at Jesus' feet and Jesus' heart to know him. You're special. You're special to the heart of the Lord in that you have given yourself to him. And I want to just pray for you right now. Father, I just thank you for this little bit of time that we get together and yet so full of you, so full of those who have gathered and hunger and thirst. And you said, blessed are they. You said that, Jesus. You said, blessed are they. They hunger and they thirst. And I'm going to fill them, Father. And, and, and I just thank you that your, your son is that way toward us, that we are special in that we are hungry and thirsty and weak and and unable in ourselves, but we trust in you and we look to you and we believe in you. So Father, just continue to strengthen your people, your gathering that gathers here every week, that gathers together to glorify you, to hear your word, to, to love you, to find those of like precious faith and, and as it is, snuggle up to them so that we might be together in this manner, in this way before you. Bless them, Father. Bless them. Bless them with your word. Bless them with your heart. Bless them with the movement of the Spirit of God. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you. I do love you. Amen.